Hello, my name is Tamiko Fraser Hines. And I'm Christopher Hines. And we are here today at the invitation of this amazing documentary, Don't Talk About the Baby, to share our infertility journey with you. And um, so we want to tell you a little bit about ourselves. Um, we have been married for almost 10 years and we have been together for about 14 years and um, we are well I'm considered a, a late in life for bride whatever I don't care about age but I, we got married when I was 39 Chris was 38 and you were um, how old? 39 wow. and we then um, started the journey to try and have children and after um, about a year of trying and not getting pregnant I went to my infertility no I'm sorry let me change that I went to my gynecologist and got my hormone levels checked and found that there were some interesting troubling numbers there so she sent me to an infertility specialist who told me from our first visit that I pretty much had premature ovarian failure which is an autoimmune disease which basically meant that I was in early menopause and on the first visit, the doctor said to us that we'd have to use an anonymous, we'd have to use an egg donor if we wanted to conceive. Um, so to say that that was devastating is an understatement. We were gutted. I mean, we had been together for several years. We were older. And, you know, I speak for myself, I was really looking forward to getting pregnant naturally as quickly as possible. Um, so there's a, we're outside, we're in LA, yep. so you'll hear some noises in the background. And you also might hear sizzling, it's my skin. Oh it's yes. It's 140,000 <laughs> degrees out here. It's very hot outside. But um, we've been asked to talk about our infertility journey. So one of the questions that was asked of us is why, uh, what was our experience like dealing with this journey? Mm -hmm. And um, it was tough. It was tough to say the least. Um, I know Chris is gonna jump in, I'm doing a lot of the talking, but for me, it was um, my worst nightmare come true. All I ever wanted to do was be a mother and to be told that I wouldn't be able to in the way that I assumed would be possible for me um, was really troubling for me for many years. We, we tried for almost six years every way possible to get me um, pregnant naturally, meaning using my own eggs. Um, we tried everything from IVF to drinking nasty teas to, you know, acupuncture, acupuncture, everything. Witchcraft. We did not try <laughs> witchcraft. But, um, it, and we spent more money than we actually have. And um, we, we came to a powerful, what I like to call a powerful choice one day after being exhausted on every level, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and most definitely financially, um, we chose powerfully to go ahead and, and use an anonymous egg donor. Um, we chose anonymous just because that's our, our choice, our preference. Um, but I, I, I've, I've gone on. I want to give Chris an opportunity to talk about his feelings prior to the um our choice to use an anonymous egg donor so i'll pass the floor it was, to him it was interesting for me though i um i prior to being married and even after we were married for years having kids wasn't that important to me um i wasn't a, opposed to it but it wasn't something i was like yeah yeah, yeah i want to have it she was yeah 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 gotta have it gotta have it want it and um what i found interesting was through the process of the five and a half almost six years of us trying i saw like uh, each time it was unsuccessful uh, a little bit of her, a little bit of that that um, that need, that desire, that wish, kind of faded on her part, and uh, I kind of saw you know that 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 dream kind of withering. And interestingly enough, mine grew, so I became the one that was really wanting to go and try and try, and and uh, I think that was actually very very important for us to get through the journey. It was like uh, you know she it was like a relay race. You know she took it, she started it, and I kept I, I was with her. And then I helped finish it off to give her more in, more energy and, and, and more uh, faith in the in the project in the, in, is it the project <laughs> in the uh, in our efforts. I never heard him use that that terminology of a relay race, and that's, I think it's a it's a great one because we definitely did. Um, there were times when we were running forward together, mm -hmm. and there were times when Somebody's I just couldn't do it anymore. Um, and uh, I, I know. I just wanted 
Sorry. <laughs> I thought you were about to start. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, no, I, I think that, that the thing that really got me too was um, when it was finally successful. I'll never forget that moment. You know, we found out the took and everything was great. Just to her face, like the the um, the joy, the love, the excitement it made everything worth it. Like literally, that moment made everything worth it, and it was such a powerful thing. And um, um, I, you know, everybody's journey is their own. Everybody's path is their own. But if you're even even halfway um, committed to uh, the process and having children by any means necessary, I guess is the term. Um, I say go for it. It is, it is so worth it. It is an amazing, amazing journey, and I'm, and I'm glad we did it. I really am. And I want to just touch on the the emotional roller coaster that it is, because um, anybody that's dealing with infertility can attest to this. It is, it is debilitating on so many levels, and I experienced levels of depression that I didn't even know existed. And you know it. It definitely tested our marriage, but it didn't. It didn't. It didn't weaken our marriage. It actually strengthened us because we got to really go to some deep, dark, scary places with each other, and 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 were just amazed and and so thrilled that we were able to be there for each other in that way. Because yes, I was the one with the diagnosis and I was the one with the issue, if you will. But this is my husband. This is the man that I waited, you know, 39 years to get married to. And then I was unable to provide him with children that were genetically both of ours. So there was just so many things going on emotionally, and I'm so grateful that we were able to make it through. Yeah, I, um, I, stronger for having gone through it. That's so true. The stronger part. Right? Like I hope this doesn't sound doom and gloom and, and horrible, um, because again, you know, don't talk about the baby. Like there's all this thing everyone wants to sugarcoat it and and and, and paint it as a as a you know, it's kind of a tough journey, mm -hmm. but we struggled. You no, know, it's very, very tough. Mm -hmm. But she's so right. It's it's very tough, but it's so worth it. There's an excavation that happens. There's a digging in, and you're finding out more about yourself, about your lover, your partner, and 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 how you guys react. You know, for better or worse. You know, for for all the things that we had to suffer through, or go through, or fight through, or um, battle through. Um, like I said, the moments. When it was good, it was so good. It makes the good moments even better, you know? It was really, really, really powerful and very, I'm very, very happy about it. One of my biggest, one of my biggest concerns, especially um, once I did get pregnant, because I'm jumping around a bit, but we did work with um, an anonymous egg donor and we uh, were able to get pregnant and we are now the, I like to say, utterly exhausted but ecstatically happy um, parents of two and a half year old fraternal twin boys named Bryce and Caden who are napping right now which is why we're able to do this uninterrupted yeah, we, got we got a couple more minutes before they wake <laughs> up but one of my one of my biggest concerns while I was pregnant through pretty much through my whole pregnancy was whether or not I was going to be able to bond with these children because of how they were conceived I used to have oops bugs <laughs> sorry I used to have um you know, not so enlightened visions of sitting there being jealous of my husband holding our, at the time, future child or children and looking at them and not feeling a connection because they weren't genetically my own. But um, I'm here to tell you uh, a thousand times over that that concern went out the window the second I saw them, um, the second they were delivered, yes. Yes, and I would like to say something because there's a dozen, there's a hundred, there's two thousand of you looking at this and all of you are in the process right before, and I will say this to you. What she just said to you, um, or what we just said to you, uh, was told to us by at least half a dozen parents, because we did our research and we asked, we're talking to every one of the women, she said, how did you feel with that attention? And every single one of them said, the moment that child was born, that thing went mm -hmm. out the window. Yeah. And so it's one thing to hear it, but to get it experientially, yeah. experientially, it's huge. So again, if you're hearing this, just like, I promise you, <laughs> just like her, she heard it and she was like, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. But she still had the concern. The moment the boys were born, mm -hmm. that thing went out the window. So please have, uh, find some, some, some um, comfort Solid, in that. Exactly. Yeah, if you're still feeling unsure about that. And message. motherhood, I mean, uh, nobody could have prepared me for the love that I am experiencing. I mean, I'm for me? so fortunate that I oh, found this man and I call him the man of my reality because I don't I don't live in my dreams I created the, I we made it so that we could find each other but the the love that I have for Bryce and Caden is out of this world and I told Chris 
months, a couple months after they were born, and you know, we got out of the new parent of twins haze. I said, you know, I don't think that I could be more bonded to these children if they were genetically my own. I mean, I'm my case, our case was that I got to carry them and my body helped build them and all of that. But, you know, in the back of your mind, you think, but are they really my children? These are my children. (laughs) There is no doubt in my mind that these are my children. So we want to just, you know, share that story. We we talk about it publicly because... um, in our experience, in my experience, um, infertility is still something that has this taboo and it's something to be ashamed of. And in the African-American community, I just didn't see or hear or come across a lot of people that were talking about it powerfully. You know, I use the term empowered infertility because you can have that be whatever your outcome is, whether you, you know, choose to adopt or choose to live child free or choose to go the route we did, which was using an, an egg donor. Um, be powerful in that choice because it just helps you along in that journey and it doesn't have to knock you down for the years. Like or it, it doesn't have to me. keep you down. You keep know, you it's down. It's going to knock you down exactly. and it'll lift you up exactly. and it'll do all those things. Exactly. But like I said, if you if it's what you want, um, it's worth it. And and even more importantly, if it's what you want and you're in the middle of it and it's not looking good and you're like, I don't want this, I don't want this. Do your home, you know, mm-hmm. do your self homework. You know, think about go back to that initial thought, that initial desire, those initial dreams. Because like I said, she went on an, an, almost 180 degrees, I mean, almost 360 degrees from wanting it, wanting it, being so frustrated by the process, you know, feeling guilty, you know. Um, mm-hmm. She felt a lot of things. I and, told him that he should divorce me because <laughs> I couldn't give him children. And he mm-hmm. very quickly told me to be quiet <laughs> and that we weren't doing that. And I also want to give Chris an opportunity because I know a lot of ladies out there um, – say that their their partners aren't really as supportive or they don't really understand it because, you know, they married this woman to have children with this woman that were genetically her own. So I want to give Chris a chance to, to, to talk about that. I, again, I said, you know, to me it seems that in an instance like this, um, I didn't have as many issues. I think I can't imagine the difficulty that it would be if the, if the man in the situation had infertility issues. Uh, because he seemed, in that instance, you have no genetic um, uh, input, so to speak. You know, in this instance, yes, it was my sperm, but she nourished those kids. She brought them into the world. So I, I feel like that was a, um, that provided an, a, 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 an avenue, a channel for her to bond, as we were talking about, to her to be part of it, to feel like, as much as close as possible as they were own. Um, if I were the one that had the infertility issues, the, the thought process and the things I'd have to go through, I, I, I say I can't imagine. I can imagine, and it's tough, but at the end of the day, I go back to, you know, what is it that you really want? What is it that's the most important to you? And, you know, you got to be willing to, to, to fight for it, to go do the up and downs. We were very lucky. We got on the first take. I. I actually worked on a, uh, on a project before, and a, a gentleman was saying that it took him 17 attempts. Mm. 17. Like, imagine the roller coaster. So, again, I speak to you. You may be one of the people going through 17 times, but whatever it is, guys, just, just you know, keep, in, keep that vision up there. You know, keep where, where you're going and what you're doing uh, at the forefront. So if it does knock you down, get back up. So we hope that our sharing our story um, encourages you, inspires you, empowers you to um, just be empowered with your infertility journey. And we want to thank everyone at Don't Talk About the Baby for inviting us to be a part of this documentary. We really hope that this, uh, this movement um, changes some lives for the better. So thank you very much. We're going to go and, and get our babies now. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, guys. Good luck to you.